Welcome to our meeting on June 2nd. Welcome to all of our members from all over the world and throughout the United States and Canada. Our meetings are weekly, exactly at the same time, uh, through June 30th. Then we're going to take a couple months off and resume September 1st. You must be a member of Naples Mug or an invited guest to attend our meetings, and that's for Zoom security purposes. Um, we are very lucky at uh, Naples Mac User Group to have members of other groups who are also members of our group. And here are the other groups. They are scattered around the world. And we're very excited and are thrilled about the uh, members uh, that have chosen to join us from other groups throughout the country and the world. I also decided this week that I want to welcome our new members who have joined in the month of May. And I'll try to pronounce your names correctly. Bernice, Bernice Weinstein, Brenda Hess, Robert Pentazes, Elizabeth Schwessinger, Timothy Baker, Margot Swatwood, Margaret Hainum, and George Brook. Welcome to all of you. We're thrilled to have you as new members. Uh, please, everyone, uh, just a reminder again to visit our wonderful, new, exciting website. And uh, a picture of Gina Cox, who's the designer. She lives in uh, England. And Mike Kowazniak from the Suffolk Mac group and a member of our group and a member of the board is also working very closely with the website. We're very proud of it. For example, um, this is the calendar of all of our meetings and all of our meetings are scheduled through the month of December of this year. And all of that is accessible on our website. All information about Naples Mac user group is accessible on the website. So please try to utilize it. Uh, I want to review if some of the meetings coming up on uh, Wednesday, June the 23rd. We're going to have a meeting that's uh, uh, a little different. Uh, Wayne Mertz, who is a member of our board and a member of our group for many, 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 many years, is just purchased a Tesla. And he's going to take us on a 1,500-mile mi drive, one-way trip. Uh, he says the Tesla is like driving a computer. If Apple were to manufacture a car, they would have made a Tesla. Find out why Wayne says this is his says this in his fascinating presentation. This should be a very exciting presentation. I also believe that Wayne is going to have uh, uh, Eckert and Jeff Bohr um, assist him in the presentation also proud owner, owners of Tesla. I'm sure everyone in the group aspires to get one and uh, we'll all run out right after this meeting and purchase. We have a, a showroom at Waterside here in Naples, Florida, and they'll be waiting for you. <laughs> um, on the 16th, uh, we have um, Dennis the Giacomo, who is back with us. He's, our, he's a member of our group and an Apple security expert in the area of Southwest Florida. And uh, he will be covering a lot of the latest security issues with us. Also on June 9th, we have Kelly Gamont. Kelly is a very involved in the Apple community. Um, very, if you, uh, are, are, are keeping on top of Apple News, uh, you'll always see Kelly out there. Uh, she's gonna review the iPhone and the iPad and all types of tips and tricks that I guarantee that we know nothing about at this point, even Mitch. Okay, today we are honored to have her, uh, uh, Victoria's gonna do her first meeting with uh, the Naples Mac user group and we're thrilled that uh, 
Uh, she agreed to do this. Uh, Victoria is also the president of the Des Moines Mac user group. And we're thrilled to have her as a member of our group. And it's all yours. I picked this topic because, frankly, I am working on the topic for December, which is decluttering your computers, et cetera, in digital estate, et cetera. And I'm doing that for myself personally, but also I think it's relevant for everyone. And so before you can declutter, you have to find what you need or want to declutter. Um, and so I started going on this uh, journey and that's why we're dealing with this topic today. Uh, and as you can see in the uh, discussion here, you have to know what you've got, you got to know where it is, and then you have to find specifically what you're looking for. I mean, it's one thing to say, I found my external drive, period. But when you're going in trying to find something specific, obviously you're going into the contents. And so that's the thrust of my discussion today. Um, and one thing I always do regardless is I tell everyone they need a backup. So this is the first thing you do whenever you're messing with your computer and Sheeta, you or others can correct me, but you should always have a backup. Um, At and, least two. <laughs> and, yes, right. Well, I do have two, thank goodness. Uh, I've got the Time Machine one, which just operates on my iMac all the time. And then I always do a bootable clone. I have to admit, I don't do it constantly. I do it usually every week or two. Uh, and I personally use Super Duper. I know that Carbon Copy Cloner is a popular one. And I know you can use Disk Utility, but I, I just need to use something simple. And I've used Super Duper for probably five or seven years or something. So for me, it's the easiest thing to do. So that's the first thing you do before you worry about where things are. And then uh, part of the decluttering commentary or readings I've been doing talks about knowing where your assets are. And you need to do that so that you know what you want to uh, index, what you want to seek in, and what you want to find. Today, I'm going to focus on computers. I have an iMac. I have a MacBook Pro. And I also have a lot of hard drives. Um, and so that is my focus in terms of searching. But there are other places that you need to be aware of having digital assets. And that would be the old fashioned CDs and DVDs, flash drives, your iPads and iPhones, and then there's online storage. And, and that's going crazy. I mean, I know I have Google, I have a Google Drive, I have Thunder Drive, I've got Zools or whatever it's called and I've got iCloud, and I am going to start compressing that and getting rid of things because right now it's just overwhelming. But as long as you know what your assets are, then you can figure out how to find things. Um, and another basic question is how much uh, room do you have and how much do you have to work with in terms of both uh, what's being used up and what's available. If you have to find something and move it to another drive or whatever. I use Mojave, I still use Mojave. I do have now a uh, SSD external drive with Catalina on it, but I haven't started using it yet, but I do have it. Uh, I like Mojave and I see no reason to leave, but I'm going to probably have to, obviously. Um, the first thing is to know that your computer, your Mac OS, has a lot of power and you may or may not need, depending on how you like to operate things, to get other apps to do things for you. I personally, if I can use the Mac OS, I, I try, and if I can't, then I find something that fills my need, and we'll talk about that down the road. Um, so in your finder, you go under view, and my default is to show path bar and to show status bar. And that's just because I look down below and I want to see how much room I have, or I want to see the path that the, uh, the folder is in, for example, my downloads folder is in this path across the bottom. And uh, it's helpful, especially if you're looking for a document, you find your document and you find, find out that it's in the downloads folder and it's not in documents 
and you need to move it, you at least now have a sense of where everything is. So I have found that to be a very helpful um, bit of information, frankly, for me. Uh, you can also go into your About This Mac, which I'm assuming everyone knows about. You go under the Apple uh, icon in the top. This is a real app, Apple icon. I couldn't find the Apple Apple icon, so I'm sorry about that, but it's an Apple icon up at the top. And uh, there's About This Mac is comes up with a whole uh, screen of options. You get overview, just you can see what those options are. You can click on storage and that'll tell you what the uh, storage is on the various uh, items attached to your drive. And you can also manage the storage. And that's where you can go in and see where everything is and how much space is being used and how much is available, et cetera. Um, in manage, you can do uh, a, a lot of things. I don't generally personally do the reduce clutter issue, but as you can see, I have things set up to have automatic trash uh, emptying. I learned my lesson to do that because I can't believe how much junk I have in my trash and how hard it is to find anything in the trash. So I tend not to put stuff in trash until I'm sure I want to get rid of it. And then I don't uh, obsess if in fact it is the trash is empty. Um, but you, there are third party apps, which I do have, but I don't use very often. Uh, Daisy Disk and What Size, those are more graphical in some ways. And so if you like pretty pictures of, of how the drives are split up into whatever uh, pie shape it is, that's very good for people who really like graphical uh, representations. I'm not one of those. Um, and then you can also go into disk utility and you can uh, let me just into disk utility and you can see all the drives that you have attached to your Mac and then how they are, uh, what, what their uh, situation is in terms of what's used, what's free, et cetera. Um, and, you know, that's again, good information to know. Mm -hmm. Victoria, yeah. Victoria yeah. you have a question. You have a question from Mitch. Mitch, can you unmute yourself and ask a question? Hi, Victoria. Uh, two slides back, um, there was an other, yeah, right there at the bottom. What is that? No, the next slide. Oh, back the other way. Right there. What? It, no, no, <laughs> no, right? Oh, okay. Next slide. Next slide. Next one. Right there. there. Ah. What is that systems other? I've got a huge amount in there, and I, I actually had Jeff over, uh, Jeff Bohr over, and we were we couldn't figure out what this was. I can't figure it out either, honestly. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, yeah, that I was my question. Okay, well, we'll have to have someone come and tell us what all this means. That would be helpful because as you can see, I've got, I have one terabyte of space, but I have a lot of other stuff on there. And so I don't know, I can't imagine the system takes up 700 gigs, but I don't know. How do, do you know the answer, Sheila? I don't, but that is a considerable amount of space. I know. I don't know what it is, honestly. Okay. If I'll tell you I can, what tell, you, uh, I, I can uh, tell you the answer. Yes, this go is, ahead, Michael. Um, this is Mike Slider. <laughs> Okay, so what, what happens is when you when you move something from trash, the library still store, stores all the remnants. There is an application that you can use. I actually use it. It's called, uh, I think it's called Defender, uh, default folder. Default folder will actually go in and remove all of these remnants from your library. Uh, and then you can go in and yourself into the library and find apps that you go, I don't need this app anymore and start deleting those from the library. Now, now that's a dangerous precedent. <laughs> yes, yes it is. But there yeah. is an app that does it. So you have to know what you're doing. Right. Yes. Okay. Well, All right. So, so do you have to be concerned about that 700 gigabytes or not? 
Uh, the answer is yes, because if you're running out of disk space, it's a problem. So, Mike, is it holding things like um, past installs and caches and other stuff like that? Uh, yes, it can. And then also, like, I have uh, Quicken. All of the Quicken stuff is stored in the library, and all of the backup files are there. All of uh, Adobe things are in there. Right. And you have several backups that just consume tons of memory. And you do have a good point, because there are cases where if I have upgraded my Adobe programs, the like some of the settings files are still in the library. And I do know to go and delete those. But again, if you don't know what you're doing, please be careful because I have deleted stuff and I've deleted fonts and all of a sudden my operating yeah. system stopped working. So you have to be very careful in that folder. Yeah, actually uh, it's Mitch again. Uh, on mine, I just looked at it again. My other users and systems uh, are very much uh, minimal. Um, I have another category underneath that's not showing in yours. It's just called other. And that's where my biggie is. And there's 400 gigabytes in it. And that's the one we couldn't figure out what was there. It wasn't in other users systems. There was a category below it. And we just called other. OK. What I suggest you do is find one and then say, go to Finder and find it. And then you'll know where it's being stored. OK. Find one what? One of you can click on one of the files that are in that other, and then if you say go to Finder, when you go to Finder, you'll see where it is actually stored. It'll show you where to find it in the Finder, and it'll probably be in the library. Thank you. All right, thank you, Michael. All right, Victoria, all yours, and I actually just looked at my same window. Big. Yeah, actually, I don't even have one. <laughs> so I have nothing. So something's going on. You might want to check yeah, on it. I all will. right. All um, right. Go ahead. All okay. yours, Victoria. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, mm -hmm. thank you for the education. I do have default folder, but I will. Oh, oh, all right. Sorry. Mine just popped up. Mine's only 12 gigabytes. So even with all the Adobe, that's interesting. Uh, actually, no, hold on. Mine is 193 gigabytes. So it's keep it's continuing to grow. Uh, well, considering the size of my drive and the size of hers, mine is, mine is what, a, a, what, a, a sixth of the size of hers. So, and it just actually reduced itself. So maybe there's something going on that the system is using this, some of this information for, but right. anyway. All right, but anyway, let's move on. We'll okay. revisit this at another time. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No problem. Thanks for the info. Uh, Thanks, let's see. Okay. So the first thing I think to realize is obviously you've got your Mac OS and Spotlight is the uh, part of the Mac OS. And I personally do not use it very well much but I'm going to explain a bit of how to use it. And then the two apps that I rely upon, which also rely on Spotlight. So you wanna make sure your Spotlight index is in good shape and that you do the right things to make sure it's, it's being kept up and in good shape. Uh, we'll be going into the Alfred and Huda spot later. And there's one article here uh, from Slant about what if you want, don't wanna use spotlight and there's a bunch of other articles I found on the same topic and I'll try to post them to the uh, uh, not the website but to the list uh, in case somebody for some reason doesn't want to use spotlight and there are reasons um, first thing set up spotlight in your system preferences and as a default I think all of the categories are checked and I frankly probably because I'm too lazy and I don't see any reason to de-check or uncheck all of the categories because who knows, what if I want something someday, which I'm not thinking of now, but maybe I want to find a font. Um, and then you set up your keyboard shortcut for Spotlight and Finder Search. And I have Alfred set up to be my default. 
which is why option space is my spotlight search. So I can do the spotlight search. I just personally use Alfred. Um, if you want to get to spotlight, there's a, the uh, spyglass is up in the menu on the right hand side. I think in my, in my uh, menu, it's right next to my username. Or you can go uh, into the finder through a uh, into spotlight through the keystroke. And as I said just a moment ago, I use command space for Alfred. I use option space for spotlight. And it's just and you can use something else if you want. There's no reason to use any particular um, thing such as I am. Um, if you are in the finder now you can't you don't want to do this obviously if you're in an application because that's asking you to find things within whatever it is you have open but if you're in the finder and you can obviously go quickly to the finder by clicking on the desktop you can use command f and then this is what you get you get the searching and uh again because i don't tend to use it like this use uh spotlight. Um, I don't have the familiarity, but this is very similar to how who to spot operates. And uh, so it is the same sort of thing. You can name what it is that you want to look for any kind or a PDF or an image or whatever. And the, the place you want to search. I, I have a few times made the mistake of doing a uh, option F and gotten this Mac and then it goes crazy, of course, because I haven't specified anything yet. So that's that was one of those things I learned to make sure that I was in a discrete, narrow place to look as opposed to the, this Mac, which as you know, or can remember, I have a huge amount of space in this. Um, I use Alfred and that is something that I use, have started using years ago. And it is a free app. And then if you want more uh, ability and variety of things you can do, you get the power pack. And as I recall, it wasn't that expensive, relatively speaking. It's not a subscription model. I just hate subscription models. So I remember I bought the power pack and, and uh, I, I unfortunately don't use Alfred as much as I'm sure I could. But uh, now that I've had to go back and look at it again, I might try start using it more often. Um, it, Alfred, of all of the articles I was looking at, Alfred really gets the top marks. And I think it is probably because it is just a bit easier to understand how to, how to use it as broader in, in how it uh, operates. Um, but it is based on spotlight. So you want to make sure that you have your spotlight index in good order. You can use it to open apps and files. I use it primarily for me as an application launcher. Uh, so I'll, you'll see this down coming up, but if I wanted to launch uh, pages or something, I just put in the word, P, the letter P and it would open up a whole bunch of choices, but pages of preview and all that sort of stuff. I have learned that if you are starting, you do a restart and you're starting fresh, if you don't already have the app opened at some point in time in the restarted machine, it may not find it immediately. In other words, uh, like I'll do a restart and I'll want to open who to spot and I'll try to use Alfred and I can use Alfred, but it won't open who to spot because it wasn't open before or it within the new re, newly restarted computer. So you do have to play with it a little bit, but I've never had a major issue with that. Um, you can search the web. Uh, again, I don't use that very often and therefore can't tell you much about it. The calculator is great. I can do a calculator, you, you do your command space or whatever your keystroke is, and then you put four plus eight times, you know, you do the typical calculator thing and you have to remember how to put together formulas. Uh, but if you're wanting a quick, you know, what's 88 times nine, it's very quick and it's quicker than my pulling out my iPhone, it's quicker than my pulling out my calculator. And 
though probably faster than my Apple Watch too. Um, you can look up definitions and everything. And again, this relies on the operating system dictionary. And then you can do a pasting. Again, I haven't used that, but that's one of the benefits of Alfred. Um, you can find contacts and you can set up set it up to email them. So if you're looking for Mary Smith and wanting to send her an email, you can do it that way. Again, I tend to do it in different ways, but that is a possibility. You can play music. I haven't done that yet, but but I, I now that I know I can, I might well start doing that. Um, and you can search and open I one password bookmarks. I do use that, and I think that's part of the power pack. And what you do is you open your Alfred with command space or whatever your keystroke is, and then you put in one P, which is your one password keystroke. And then you put in whatever it is you're looking for, and it'll open up that URL or that bookmark, and it'll be open, and then you fairly easily can get in with a login and the password you want. And you can do system processes. I don't, again, do that, but I know it's possible. Um, so this is what an Alfred screen looks like. Um, and I have it set to launch at login again because I prefer to use this and I have it set to use uh, command space and answer all of these questions and then on the left hand side you there are things that you can set and some of them again because I have the power pack you may find that this is a little more detailed than the free version but you might want to just start with the free version and see if you like it um, this is uh, a place where you set your preferences for your um, Alfred app and as you can see you can set applications you can either search for the application or not you can look for folders documents etc you can read all of that and on your left hand side you can go through and find various things I have not used it as I said I did use one password I do use that um, I stay away from the terminal unless I really think I need it and know what the heck I'm doing I do use calculator um, and some of the other things I've used, but so infrequently. I, I'm pretty simple about what I do. I don't get too exotic, I think, at times. Um, this is the power pack thing. And this is sort of fun because I've never really used it, as I said, but I was looking into it a bit. And, and, I'm, and you can write it up your own, by the way. You can, you can create your own workflow. So it's sort of like, um, What's the new uh, Mac OS thing? It's, it's an iPad, I, iPhone, shortcuts. It's sort of like you can create shortcuts um, in Alfred. So this is one. And so I say, movie Casablanca. Should I watch this movie? And then it comes up with information about the movie. Find IMDb, that's the one on the left. Rotten Tomatoes, the one on the right, and Casablanca, YouTube. So if you want to do research on, on your movie, you can just put in movie Casablanca or whatever and uh, come back to that. And there are others, as you can see, search who to spot. I, I do it a little differently, but you can do it. You can create a simple to-do list. There are a whole bunch of different workflows that are created by other people. Uh, to fit with Alfred. Um, if you look, the third one down is the Neo Finder. Uh, find a Neo Finder. Norbert Dorner is the uh, author, developer of Neo Finder, which I'll be talking about. And so he has obviously contributed a workflow to Alfred so that Alfred, you can click in Alfred and have it do the finding in Neo Finder, which is Something, again, I have not done, but it's possible. So that's how you do the looking up your movie, I guess. Uh, you can search the web. That's the other thing. And you can search, if you look in the middle column here, you can see search Google for X or I'm feeling lucky. You know how all of that works in Google. And then there are other things. You can open your Gmail. You can do various things. DuckDuckGo is included. So, uh, and those are the keywords to use. So you open Alfred and 
you put in what you want to do. Search Google. So you put the word Google in first. And then you put in the word mask, or I did. And then up pops Google mask. And the little uh, icon or the little arrow thing going back, that's just hitting return. And as you can see, if you want to go to the Google Chrome app, you do a, a, a <laughs> command two to get to that app. So there are choices there that you can make using different keystrokes to get to where you want to go within Alfred. This is who to spot, and this is the one that I tend to use. And it's mainly because I honestly never figured out really using uh, the Mac Spotlight search. And I think that's because every time I put something in or started it up, it just immediately jumped out there and started searching. And if you remember, I said something about it would say my Mac or something, and then it, I get a gazillion things. And so I really like to be able to put in and frame what it is I'm looking for and then hit go. So I'm not pulling in 20,000 items. Um, you can you can narrow <laughs> in who to spot. You can say, I don't want 20,000. In fact, I think the default I have set is 10,000. That's even too much, honestly. But as you can see, you can refine the search by uh, what name is, what the content is, date, size. And this is how you do it, how I do it. I open Alfred and then I put in the word H and then I hit return. And as you can see, things which have H's in them in their name are choices here. So if I, for example, didn't use an S, but I use an H, I could decide, oh no, I want my ScanSnap home app. And so I hit command two and it'll open up ScanSnap as opposed to who to spot or uh, command three opens Hazel as opposed to, et cetera. So that has worked out for me. I, as I said, I tend to do this uh, with keystrokes to open who to spot and do searches. In who to spot, you can, there are all sorts of um, templates that are part of the program. Um, like long lost files, that's, I think, and that comes with a program, recent files, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I create a template and I think my 2021 master is the one and you can set it up as your default. I mean, you can use any other template you want and you can create a new template, but these are the templates that are, for example, if I want PDF search, then that'll automatically open up the search that will seek PDFs on the hard drive or whatever. PDF search EAP is a specific search looking for PDFs within a program that I use, which is Email Archiver Pro, which backs up my email. So if I only want to look for PDF uh, copies of my email, I go and hit that one and that one will search. Um, and that's pretty useful for the way I do things. Name contains. Uh, usually you have a name that you have an idea about what it is. If, for example, you think it begins with something like a screenshot. Screenshot be always begins with screen. So I'll, I'll put name begins screen. Uh, text content. Uh, I use phrase. You can use words. Uh, you can contain prefixes and words and some other things. I contain phrase. I always figure that it is narrow enough. I don't tend to use file extension, but again, I could. I, if I was looking for TIFF files or JPEGs, I could do that. Content kind, you can put images, but if you're specifically looking for TIFFs or JPEGs, then I'd use a file extension. The created within is very helpful in narrowing what you're searching for. If I know that I created something in the last three years and that the word um, bank draft was in it, all I or on the in the name, 
then I could put in name contains bank draft created within the last three years. You can lower that from days down to years or up to years, I guess. <clears throat> and then that'll look for all the documents or items, actually content kind, if I don't specify it, it'll be any kind, bank draft, any kind within the last three years, and it'll come up. Um, I do find that is a good way to search. Uh, I tend to do local volumes with user home because I usually have some sort of a, a volume on here <coughs> in addition to the user home. And then you can exclude things. I, there's a uh, item, there's a folder that I have in the Dropbox I don't want to ha have searches done on because of complications with that. So I don't have to use it. I exclude, exclude it as part of my default. And as you can see, limit 10,000 most recently opened, which is crazy. I should really put it down to 2,000 or five or something like that, it's just too much. But I have found that this really works very well for me. And you can filter it then so that if you are looking for something on uh, in only a certain folder or something, you can put a filter on it and then it'll pop up or you can organize it based on on the path. You can set up a path. Let me go back for a moment. It, under who to spot, you can set a path up so that you can, uh, it, where it says results, name, kind, date, modified, that's, that's, those columns are all choices you can make. I didn't have a sample of that here, but you can choose to have the, the path show. So you can click on one thing and see where it is and go to it actually by doing a command R will take you right to that, that item in wherever it is on the computer in, and that works out very well. You can, de you can de delete things if you want to delete it. I use a lot, uh, I do a lot with who to spot to find things and then move them. In other words, find a uh, checking account PDFs, okay? Because I have checking accounts. And uh, so I can find name begins with checking, uh, con uh, kind is PDF, created within the last two years. Um, and then I just search and I'll get a whole list of things. And let's, let's assume I have 12 things there. Then you can select all those 12 and you can either copy them and move, or you can just move them if in fact you want to do that. So there's a lot of control. control. I personally try to do a, a move, but sometimes copy move is better. Again, it's just a choice. Victoria? Yes, ma'am. Go back to your slide, mm -hmm. please. Yep. Can you save this search? Yes, that's how you create the templates. Okay, so you save it, you create yeah. it first and save it and then you put in your criteria? Yeah, it's under, I don't, I don't know how to show you. <laughs> oh, that's okay, you don't have to do that. Okay. I was just, just curious. Uh, Michael Slider, would you like to unmute yourself and ask a question? Uh, yeah, I, I've been trying to find emails when I use uh, my Mac mail and it's so limited that I know I'm looking for something specific. I know it's somewhere in the cute computer and I can't find it. When I go to Spotlight, Spotlight goes nuts because I can't control it. And so I'm wondering if you like using um, Alfred to find mails that could be anywhere in your computer and you know they're somewhere, uh, but you can't find them and you're looking for the text that you want, want to find. Yeah, I think you could do that with Alfred. Uh, I have never done that because I don't use Alfred as a finder other than a, a app uh, opener. But uh, as I said, I'll use Alfred to open who to spot and then, and I know that there's a, uh, a, up in the menu, you can pick who to spot there and all that. I just find it easier to do it the way I do it. Uh, and then in there, what I would do is, you know, name, name contains, let's assume you, you, uh, the word exercise is in the name and you know it's a, I think content kind may, may include something about email, I'm not sure. Um, 
but you can put a location as being narrow enough probably to go into your mail uh, folder in your library. Um, and I, uh, as I said, I have this program I use to create PDFs. And so if I do a, a search for uh, exercise in the last year or something like that, um, I'll get maybe both the PDFs and the email um, on that topic or with that name. And I, I don't mess with my inbox stuff. I don't mess with mail. I just open the PDF and use that. Um, and as I said, that's, uh, that's a separate program. Uh, I don't know how, be how better to search mail items. I noticed you have file search machine in your computer. Do you ever use that with in conjunction with uh, Alfred? I have not, no. I, there are a whole bunch of apps out there. As I said, I did some research on this and I, I pulled it up. There's a bunch of apps, some of whom, which I never heard of before, uh, all kinds of apps to search for things and search in certain ways for things if you don't want to rely on Spotlight, because you do have to rely on Spotlight for both Alfred and Hootaspot, uh, then there are apps for that too, which would do their own searches. But again, I haven't used them. I, I rely on the ones I'm talking about here, really. Thank you. Okay. Any all right, other? great. Yeah, okay. No, you're, uh, you're all set, go ahead. All right. Whoops, gotta get back in here. All right. Now, some things are off the computer, and that is because over time you save things to uh, CD, DVD, etc., internal and external drives. And I use NeoFinder, um, and there is a free version. I pay for mine. And I'll tell you what: every time I've had a problem or a question, I email and I talk email Norbert, the guy who wrote it. And he responds. I mean, it's, it's customer support's phenomenal here. Um, I do not have NeoFinder Neo on either my phone or the iPad, but that's just me. Um, and there are alternatives. I give you that uh, URL. Uh, this is what the library looks like in NeoFinder. And as you can see, I sa it says disks internal 27. I have 27 internal hard drives. They're in storage. I mean, they're here, but they're in storage. They're all closed up. And I have 24 hard drive. Those are external hard drives. So each of those has been cat cataloged. And I tend to do a re-catalog or re-cleaning out or whatever every year or two. In any event, you can do all sorts of uh, indexing. And that's what it does. The NeoFinder, if you, for example, I have it apparently, I've, I've indexed my box account. I didn't know I did, but I apparently did. Um, and I in, uh, indexed the Macintosh HD is my laptop. The mini is a mini I own and my husband uses and my iMac is the one I have. And those I tend to index a little more often just so I can find things if I want. Um, and then you can see smart folders. I have a lot of app, uh, aperture libraries and so I have indexed all of the disks, the internal disks and the external hard drives. And I have various app libraries on all of them. And uh, so if I want to find them quickly, I don't have to do a new search. I can just go to that smart folders and it'll pull them in. Um, this is what you get when you select a catalog. For example, I selected my iMac catalog and this, you get the the basic folder items there and the size of the folders, when it was created, when it was modified. And then on the right hand side, you have the information regarding the volume that you've indexed plus the catalog itself. If you look here, you'll see uh, volume name is Victoria's iMac 2019 and size, free space. Uh, etc. How many folders it has, how many files it has, the data size, 
how, when it was created and the modification would be the modification of the, uh, of the catalog, I think. And then you just keep going and that's, you can have all these catalogs. You can find out how big they are and what, when they were created and modified, et cetera. They do take a lot of room, but I have, uh, I have I, the iCloud uh, bundle thing. And so I have plenty of room there. And so I have my NeoFinder libraries, library is on my iCloud so that I can access it. If I'm traveling, I take my MacBook Pro and I can access it. I suppose I could get the app for my iPad, but I personally prefer using my MacBook Pro. Um, so, so Victoria. Yeah. You, every, all of this information is available in the cloud through NeoFinder, correct? Yes, and depending on where you put it. I mean, obviously, what I do is I save it. It gets saved to my iCloud account into my drive up there. Okay. And then, so those 27 hard drives <laughs> are all in your cloud? No, no, no. The, the indexes to the hard drives okay. are in the cloud. And and I just have a lot of cat hard drives, unfortunately, and they date back years. And when I was practicing law, I had to have a lot of information retained on there. So the indexes to that, to the, each of these 24 or the internal drives, the index to the information is in the cloud, not the actual items themselves. Okay. <laughs> that would be ultimate decluttering, I guess. Uh, so that when I want to search for something in NeoFinder, and I'll, it's a few things over, I select what catalog I want to search or catalogs. If I, if I know I want to find, in fact, I'll, I'll move to that. Uh, here is, these are all the hard drive catalogs I have, okay? 24 hard drive catalogs. And this tells me I have, uh, and I, I've numbered each one. It's just me, again, how I can keep track of things. And it tells me the size, how much free space there is on it, when I created it originally, and when it was last modified. And uh, as you can see, you can go down and it tells you all of those inf that, that bit of information. You can add a label. I have yellow and green. What that tells me is that I think I used yellow when I did a uh, indexing a while ago and then green is more recent. I don't remember now, but you can label it almost any way, anything. And then you can do keywords, you can do path searches, et cetera. This is again in NeoFinder, in the catalog indexing, the actual, doc, uh, the actual external drives are in my closet or wherever they are. But the index is in the computer and in this case in iCloud. And this is how you can set up what you're looking for. Uh, I do not tend to use NeoFinder to keep track of my media and uh, EXIF photo info and that sort of stuff. I can, and the same with the ID3 tags and music and all that, uh, it might do it on its own. I just, frankly, I don't use NeoFinder to find those sort of things. I either have it in my iTunes or I don't. And I have it in my app library or I don't. And I'm generally not looking for things in that format anyway. If I have an aperture library and I find that there's a picture from Portugal in it, the aperture library will tell me all that. I don't need to do the searching, at least I don't, searching so specifically. I'm looking for uh, EXIF data or, or whatever. Uh, here is a search. So you can say, I'm looking for the name of something. I'm looking for, and you can just read that yourself. Various com comments you can put in, pass, you can add a label, I guess. Uh, I tend to start with name contains, 
uh, and I usually start with a date. Um, here is, I was trying to find a photo that I took in Portugal and I knew that I probably had named everything in that uh, trip, Portugal at least, or something. I probably could have done keyword in that respect. I don't remember now how I organized it. Um, I'm trying to find sizes less than three megabytes. I didn't want to get big, huge photos. And I knew it was on a trip between 2013 and 2019. If I, if I wanted to do only the trip in 2018, then I would have changed the date, been more specific. And then here you find uh, the name of it because the word Portugal is in that. Now, that's because that was either in an email, the 2016-11-14, the 1708-44, that is how uh, Email Archiver Pro archives email. And so I know from looking at that, that that's a PDF that's in Email Archiver Pro, and in this case was moved off into this other hard drive. Um, but you can see the photos, name, Portugal iPhoto, Portugal trolley, etc., and all that. Um, and then you can filter it. So you can check the little box at the bottom, filter, and put in what word you want to have in there, and then what items and all that. I don't tend to use that, but I have a, a, for various times of various reasons. And then you can find the, the path. The path is really helpful because if you're going to open up HD number 022, I think that's what the one is, 22 or 23, it's, it's a large catalog, and it's got a lot of app um, Aperture libraries in it, but this will tell me which library it's in or which folder it's in. And so that's why having the path is very helpful and, and actually goes further on because there's more data there and I just didn't want to fill up the screen with it. Um, but I find this uh, very good if I'm looking for something not necessarily currently on my iMac. And uh, so if I, or if I'm looking for something on my iMac, but it might in fact be older, uh, then I can search in all of, all of the uh, catalogs. If you look at the top, it says found items, selected catalogs. You can select as many catalogs as you, as you want. I selected one in this case. You can select every single internal drive. You can select every single external drive plus the iMac, plus the Mini, plus the MacBook Pro, and search for everything. Um, it's better when you're trying to find something if you narrow the search. Being narrow to begin with is better than being too broad. It's always better to, to find things by targeting what it is you're trying to find. So here is the summary. Uh, finder about this Mac and disk utility will tell you a lot about your computer. Then you use Spotlight to search. And then I use, as I said, Alfred Hooterspot NeoFinder. And that's it. <laughs> All right. Do we have any questions from anyone attending? If so, you can raise your hand or put your questions in the chat. And I don't see any questions. It was, uh, no. No questions. Okay. No, no questions. It's so thoroughly understood, Victoria, that when you have <laughs> no questions, everything was thoroughly understood and everyone is just clear. Well, uh, and I can be asked online or by email. So it's not like. OK. Here's a simple question, Victoria. Mary here. Mm -hmm. um, when I organize in my finder um, uh, how I want things listed, I say the, the, most, the most recent modification. And it lists the modifications according to date. But there are separations by year or by month. And I would like to get rid of those separations and just have a single listing. And I don't know how to do that. 
and you're talking about using a finder. Right. Well, since I use <laughs> Hootaspot, um, I would imagine there's, I don't know if I can do it here. Let me, let me, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm looking here. Uh, can, Mary, I, can Mary show us what she's talking about? Yeah, that might. I, I know what she's talking about, and I believe that's a finder setting. Mary, yeah. I agree. I, I find it absolutely irritating, and whatever it was, I turned it off years ago, and I know it's a finder setting. Yeah, I'm here in the uh, searching desktop because that's where right. I opened it. And it says kind so, as any. And then if you go down, it, yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I don't do that. Okay. Go to um, finder preferences. It may be there. And if anyone knows exactly where this setting is that we're talking about, please uh, open up your mic and let us know. But uh, it is, this is a setting. Okay. So can you go to finder preferences? I can, I'm looking here now. All right, are you in, if you're in full screen, take your cursor all the way up to the top of your screen and your menu should pop up or, or get out of full screen. Or are you just showing the finder window? That's Mary. I'm just looking. In oh, that's screen. Mary. Okay. okay. Mary, you want to bring that back up? Okay, I just didn't want you to appear here. Oh, okay. I'm looking myself. All right. Can you get to find a preferences, Mary? Okay, you're again sharing your window. You need to share your desktop. I don't know how to do that. Okay. We need to see the preferences. Okay. Okay. She has to close his folder and get back to her desktop. It, it, yeah, Command it, comma. She, she can she can do another screen. Uh, what'd you say, Jim? Command comma for? Command comma for preferences on any app. Oh, Don, sorry. Uh, All right, I want, to, I want to get to showing you my desktop. How do I do that, Sheila? You would do a new screen share. You would go to screen share again and select the desktop or share screen again. There we are, yeah. perfect. All right, click on your finder window. Click the, this finder window, yeah, right there. Go to the finder menu and go to the finder menu and let's check under preferences. All right, uh, general, click on, click on, uh, I don't, I think it might be view. Go, go to the view menu, leave this up, go to the view okay. menu. Yeah, and select show view options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Always open in column view. I don't group group by date modified. Okay, so please stop stop moving that. Uh, group. All right, unselect group by date modified. Yeah. Click there. Click there, please. Which place? Date group by date modified. It's a drop down menu. Yeah. Click on it. Click on it. Go back. Select to none. select none. None. There you are. Yeah. yeah, but then it isn't listed in, in date order. It's listed arbitrarily you, or alphabetically. Can, and I yeah, want it listed in you date can, you order. Can, yeah, and so you go into view and in this screen, go up to the top. You right now have it set up in column. If you go to view then, next to the left, no, to the left. See that view there, no, click on that. No, she, she, said she, wanted it, she said she wanted it listed in date. By date? Yeah. Yes, by okay. date. 
So I go to group and I drop it down. And when I click on date modified, it's going to group it again. See? Don't click, don't click on date modified. Don't. Yeah, don't. Just click on date. Date created. Well, date created is not what I want. I want what the most you... recent date I have accessed, whatever it is. Okay, well then what I would do is go select date mod or whatever date modified is in that column over here to, to your left and just click on it to put it in order. No, you want to ungroup it. You don't want to group it to none and then go to date modified and click on that and you'll put it in date in, in order. Click on the word date modified, right? Yeah, below, the, right below. Below, below, below where it says date modified, below your name, Mary. It'll sort Got it. it. Got it. Yeah. It'll yeah. sort it. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. Oh, thank you, you guys. That is so much better. Okay. Thanks so Great. much. Thank you. And see You're how, welcome. And you can see, you can set up the preference there. You can do a use as defaults. So you can put all your things in there with defaults and you can, it says sort by date modified now. Where, where am I setting up the preference? Uh, you're going over to your right on your screen is this block here. It says Mary Condon, always open in list view, browse in list view, et cetera. And you can see what you can, you know. She's talking about the window, Mary, directly to the right of the finder window, right there. Yeah, right there. That's where you can set up your preferences and you can use them as default. So you can say, always open in list view, always sort by date modified, always calculate sizes, et cetera. Okay. How do we how do we get to that window? Uh, view, view view menu. View menu. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Fi okay. Finder view menu and right. view options. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Sheeta. Yes, Don. It looks like that sets it globally, right? Maybe she only wants it in a specific folder. It sets it globally. You have I don't believe you have a choice. I like it globally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you just okay. open the folder and then it does the same thing. It lists. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Right. Right. Thanks. Okay. okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? How do I get yeah. out of screen sharing? Uh, Stop go share. Stop. There you go. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thank you. Okay. Victoria. Yes. The reason that you don't use Spotlight for your searches is why? I, when I was doing, I mean, years ago, when I was practicing law and keeping financial records and everything else, I found that when I was putting uh, searches in Spotlight, it would just like jump immediately to do the search instead of waiting until I finished putting in all my, and this may have been pre Mojave or pre High Sierra or something. It's, it's that long ago. And I just got out of the habit. And then I found Alfred and I found who the spot. And I just thought, I like those. Sheeta, is that still the case? For what Spotlight does? Yeah, Spotlight yeah. is interactive. When you start typing, it starts looking for stuff. But you right. can put you can put certain words in Spotlight to tell it to search for what you want it to search for. Right. If you if you look in the chat, like for example, if you put in kind colon and then mail and then like like if i typed in somebody's name spotlight would then look into my mail app database and find mm -hmm. all of the mail with that person's name so there are ways to focus spotlight right but you know there are times when spotlight does find what i want there are times when it doesn't so you know there there i use the finder like victoria showed and I also um, create searches in the finder and I save them so that I can quickly access them from the sidebar. So there are a lot of different methods to use. You have to use the method that works for you and gets you where you want to be. Yep. Mm -hmm. Different strokes for different folks. Right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right, any other questions, anyone? Any comments, questions? Now's your chance. Go ahead. Yeah, how do you save a spotlight search? Oh, okay. 
No. All righty. Uh, let me see if it's okay to share my screen because I have tons of stuff on my screen. Oh, you can when you open the, uh, you know, your command F in your finder. Mm. You've got a that, that's you, that. You that you can search save. there. Yeah, you you search there and you save it. Yeah. So, like, uh, Frank, can you share your screen and I can show you? Sure. Uh, do, 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 share screen. I guess I should be on desktop one. Allow Zoom. What? Zoom keeps losing my permission. Okay. Jeez. Okay. So All right. Hold, hold on. Good. Maybe I can there bring mine up. You got it? Yeah. Well, well, you know what? Now that I have, it has to quit and reopen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hold hold up a second. I can uh, share my screen and show you how you can do that. Okay. Okay, so let me hide this and hide this and okay. Da -da 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 -da. All right, I'm going to share screen right now. Okay. And let's oh, yes. we're, we're still seeing Mary. Uh, I'm, I'm coming. Give, oh. me, give me give me a second. That's not Mary. That's <laughs> Victoria. All right. Oh, right. Victoria, see, I mean, I'm sorry. Do you see my screen? Yes. All right. So if I press uh, Command F, so let's say if I want to search for kind, I want to search for application. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's going to show all the applications that can run or that are right now on my computer, all right? If I come over here to the right-hand side, you see where it says save? Oh yeah, okay. I can save this search. It'll ask me the name of the search. Okay. And, yeah. and I've also told it to add it to the sidebar. So it saves it wherever, save searches database, or I can give it some new location. If I choose save, and now over here, at the bottom of my um, sidebar, there's my application search. Oh, will it automatically okay. update? Yes, it will. So oh. like I have, I have a search for movie clips. I have a search for any file over 200 megabytes. So if I think I need to remove some of the video files, I search for practically anything and you can save it. And yes, it automatically updates. Got it. Okay. Oh, perfect. Thank you. You're quite Powerful. welcome. Yeah, very, very. Okay. And all right, Victoria, back to you. Oh, I can uh, answer questions or I can <laughs> try all to. Right. Or, or ask a few. <laughs> <laughs> or ask a few. Yeah, right. All right. Or um, we can say goodbye. Right. Thank you very much, Victoria. That yep, was a thanks. very, very interesting meeting. Um, it really uh, made made me do a great deal of thinking of how I should begin to get organized. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. Um, sure. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Nice job, Victoria. Well. Yeah. Thank you for Thank the you. opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Good. All thank right, you. Thank you. Have, thank you very a, much. Have a great day, everyone. Stay safe. Thanks very much, Victoria. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.